are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio, man. We are here once again. And today, man, we have a returning guest. You might know her from the Power of the Paul series that she did not too long ago. But we have the one and only Megan Nolan back on the show. You know her website. If you heard her previous interviews on this on this platform, is megan-nolan.com. But she has a new book that we're going to be talking about today, The Warrior's Journey. And that website for that particular project is thewarriorsjourneybook.com. So for that, we have Megan. How you doing? I'm so good. Thank you. Great to be back. Yeah, man, it's great to have you back. And it feels like you've been doing a lot of work lately. I mean, tell us about this project and what made you want to write The Warrior's Journey. Well, I wrote the book that I wish I had had about 17 years ago when I became an entrepreneur. I was inspired to share the tools in the book because they've been so powerful for me for learning how to truly harness my inner strength and my own personal power. And so that I can keep charging forward on my mission because, you know, being an entrepreneur and just a human in general, you know, it's a roller coaster. There's ups and downs and all arounds. And and I think it's really important that we have some real talk around the challenges that can come with that and talking about the, the inner shifts that are necessary to see the outer results that we're looking for, whether that's in your business or in your life or in your relationships, because we know that everything is a reflection of what's happening internally. And so the tools that I share inside the book are helping you to truly use the tools of yoga, use the practice of yoga to become your most confident, grounded, centered, powerful self so that you can go charging forward on your beautiful soul's mission. So that's the essence of the book and what I've been up to. And with the book, you have all these different pieces. Like you said, you you use yoga as as a tool to introduce to people, but you also, you're helping people take command, you know, of all the negative folks inside the head that try to, you know, downpour on your dreams and goals and be a distraction. So touch on that a little bit more in the audience. What's some of the different uh, snippets and the chapters in this book that you dive into? For sure. So, yes, what you're talking about is the negative committee in our head. And we we all have these kind of characters, if you will, that are either trying to keep you from getting to where you want to go. They're trying to make sure everything's perfect or they're doubting or they're making you work really hard and no stopping, no breaks, all of that. So that committee in your head in, in the framework that I'm trained in, which is called mental fitness, they are called the saboteurs and the 10 different ways that we self-sabotage, basically the ways that we get in our own way. And we all do it. We all have our own different flavor of it. You know, some people are procrastinators. Some people are perfectionists. Some people like me were hyperachievers and they were always like doing the next thing and do it now. And I should have done it yesterday and have a hard time giving up control to other people. And so we all have these different ways that this shows up. But really what, what we're speaking to in the book is, is cultivating a witnessing presence, learning to catch yourself in these habits by becoming more aware of What's going on inside your head? Because whether you want to admit it or not, we all talk to ourselves all day long, whether that's out loud. You know, some people talk to themselves out loud like me. Other people, we just talk to ourselves in our head because we have this ongoing, ongoing flow of thoughts, anywhere between 60 to 70,000 thoughts every day. And most of them are ones that we had yesterday. Most of them are negative because they help to keep us alive and keep you safe. And so when we learn to catch ourselves in these old habits, these old patterns, that got you here and have kept you alive, which thank you very much, brain. That's so beautiful. And we're super grateful, but those thoughts are not going to be the ones that get you where you want to go because they're going to be the ones that will come up when you're about to stretch yourself, you know, when you're about to go on a podcast or when you're about to go do something important, like go to a meeting, that's when those old habits are going to pop up. 
But the cool thing about your brain and about you as a person is you get to choose what you're putting your focus on. You get to choose what thoughts you're continuing to feed your energy to, because although they are, you know, they're hardwired and they happen at the subconscious level, when you start to bring awareness to them, you're shining a little bit of light on them. And when we start to recognize, oh, does this thought make me feel good or does it feel make me feel like I'm never going to figure it out and I'm doubting myself and it makes me feel sad and heavy and all that, then you can start to recognize, oh, okay, well, that's what I was just focusing on. And is that going to get me where I want to go? No, not necessarily. And so you can begin to choose your thought. You can begin to use your mind like a powerful tool. And that's one of the tools that you'll learn in the book to help you to truly begin to think on purpose, because that's one of the key pillars of this work is learning to use your mind as a powerful tool. So that's definitely a lot of what we speak to in the book. Yeah, I mean, you have great points laid out there because, I mean, we use our mind every single day. I mean, tell me, I mean, Megan, when was the last time you, you know, never use your mind? <laughs> Never, right? right? I don't know. <laughs> we use it all the time, you know? Yeah. So when, when, the reason why I say it is because also in your book, you talk about mastering, uh, I think it's called the art of uh, bounce back ability. And you mentioned that in the book and you have this whole like stay in the flow. So explain that to the audience. What does that mean? Stay in the flow and how you use the art of bounce back ability. So bounce back ability is, what I call resiliency, right? We've heard that word resilient. And so resilient means your ability to get your, to get back up, dust yourself off and keep going. But anytime we go through an experience, because you've gone through it, you're not the same person. You've learned, hopefully you are seeing yourself in a different way. You're, you're taking some different perspectives. You're having some new thoughts, right? And so the ability to bounce back means when we have things that knock us down or when we have a mistake or a problem or a setback or something, it's the willingness to take the perspective that everything that happens for you is happening not only for you, but is an opportunity or a gift. So it's either an opportunity for you to learn and grow and strengthen in certain areas of yourself and in your perspective, or it's a gift because it's the outcome or the result that you were looking for. So it's very much a growth mindset. It's very much a seeing things from a, a perspective of everything is happening for your growth and your expansion to help you to get where you want to go. Because the person that you will become when you achieve your goals, is not the same person that you are today. Everything that we go through is helping you to grow and learn and evolve. And so when we are taking that perspective and we're seeing things in a different way, from that different light, if you will, then it helps you to stay in that place of possibility and potential, which is our flow state, right? When we're seeing things in that, oh, let's be curious. Let's have fun with this. And, and I know sometimes life can feel stressful and it doesn't feel fun. And that's when we are in stress and we're in a totally different part of our brain and we get a lot of tension and resistance. And, you know, that also can cause strain and stress and struggle in your body and tension and maybe illness and all that stuff that that is associated with stress. So when we are taking the perspective of, okay, I'm going to slow down. How can I look at this situation differently? How can I begin to, you know, move from your center and begin to take things with that grain of salt, that curiosity, it does help you to stay in flow because otherwise we tend to be in that push state, right? And that goes back to your first question of, of that negative committee in our head that's always telling us, go, come on, you got to get it done. Only when you have 10,000 downloads on each episode every 10 minutes, you know, then will you be any good at anything? Or, or like, you need to have this number of followers or this number of revenue or whatever it is. And what it's doing is it's it's blocking your connection to abundance and source and opportunity because we're staying in that place of resistance and frustration and doubt and and all of that. So it really is, you know, admittedly, it's it's like every couple split seconds, we got to keep checking in on ourselves. What am I focusing on right now? What are you looking at? What are you giving your attention to? Because that's always your point of focus is your point of power. So that's a lot of what we do. And that's really what it means to be a warrior. So as you mentioned, the, the book is called The Warrior's Journey. And so what it means to be a warrior differs for everybody. But what I think it is, it's 
It's a perspective. It's a place within yourself where you feel powerful. And it's not necessarily, you know, that, that warrior on a battlefield image. It's more out in life, on the court, if you will, like going after it, charging after your vision, going and doing the things that light you up. It's really about you using this life to the fullest, each day to the fullest. That's what it means to be a warrior and really to master the art of bounce back ability. Yeah, when you say all that, it kind of made me think of a funny story. Um, <laughs> I remember going to drivers at school back in the day when I was in Michigan, and my driving instructor gave us a little uh, advice. He said, man, when you get to my age, when you drive, <laughs> you're going to sometimes get to your destination, but like, how the heck I get here? Because mm-hmm. we get so good at driving throughout the years that you're not checking every street, <laughs> right, on your route. You ever had that experience where you just drive to work or drive to your destination and you just like, dang, I, I just got it. But you notice you didn't check on every street to make sure you're on the right path. And the reason why I said that is because I feel like that's what this whole warrior thing is, right? This warrior, they, they already know what's up. They know what is expected. They know what they got to do. So they're not doing what like the amateur self would do. I had to check every little, you know, bit and piece along the way. Instead, you just in that flow state where you just go. Because you're, you see what I'm saying? That makes sense. Totally. Yeah. It, and what I, what I hear you saying and, and, what I, I know, because that's definitely happened to me too, you know, and or you go through a whole day and you think, what did I do today? You know, yeah, but you I, I know I work. wasn't just sitting there and doing nothing all day. I was, I was doing things all day, but I can't remember what I did. And like, that's the thing. And what you're speaking to, and you really, you nailed it there is it's being present. It's being in each and every moment so that we can live it to the fullest because it is, it's a journey, right? We have, we've heard that before. It's, and you said that in your story of like, we get to the destination and we don't even know how we got here or what route that we took to get here. But really it is, it's that, that slow and steady pace of, okay, what is this day going to bring for you? What are you going to do with it? What are you going to, how are you going to make the most of it? Because, you know, that's the reality is that we have today and none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. And so what can we do each day to really live it? And that's what it is to be present. And it is to just keep coming back, you know, and I hear, and believe me, because my brain is already like, yeah, but I got a million things to do and I got to keep going and da, 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 da. And the truth is, is that, you know, when we are in that push, 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 push state, that's really not when we get to live our life to our fullest. You know, we hear a lot of these stories of people when they get to their end of days and they talk about their, their life a lot of the times people have regrets for what they missed out on. Typically it's not for what they did. It's what they didn't do. And we get the choice of each day of, okay, am I going to slow down today? Am I going to take a little break here? Am I going to take a power pause? You know, because otherwise our mind will be running us into the ground quite literally. And so it really is, it's, it's a journey. And I think that's important. And thank you for mentioning that. I like what you said about, you know, when people, hit that age where they have more, you know, thoughts about regretting, you know, things they didn't, you know, do or try. Because I think it's true. And I mean, shoot, I'm an uncle. So it's like, it's a state of mind where it's like, all right, we got to make time for these memories. Because time won't wait for you to make a memory. Time will always flow. You know what I'm saying? We we don't have the power to stop the clock. (laughs) And be like, all right, let me snooze a little bit. And then when I wake mm-hmm. up, I'll, I'll make these memories, you know, I'll get to this list or I'll get to that, you know, experience, whatever. We don't have the power to, to, to pause time. Time don't wait for us. It just goes, you know? Mm-hmm. And until we have that mentality that, okay, does not that make this super deep? Yeah, totally. And I, I think it's even more valid, you know, we depending on when people listen to this later, but you and I are talking today, July 3rd. We're already over halfway through 2023. That is just crazy, right? It's just crazy how fast it goes by. Like 
you know, we're going to be turning our head and, and putting up Christmas direct, de- de- decorations or getting your holiday costumes out like or for Halloween. Rather. Like, it literally goes by like that. And it's really up to us to be intentional about how we at least pause periodically throughout the day, you know, sometimes, and especially for my community and, and, you know, definitely in the corporate setting as well, like we set quarterly goals and maybe monthly goals and, and we, we set those and then we go back to them at the beginning of the quarter or the beginning of the month. And it really is, I think it's so important for us to have these little check-ins more frequently than that, because each day there's an opportunity for you to realign. And so inside the book, there's, there's questions for you to, as we go through a chapter and we focus on one quality, because what it's helping you to do is awaken these different qualities of awareness and resiliency or bounce back ability. And so giving you the opportunity to go a little bit deeper with there's journaling questions in the book. Inside the book, there's also different breathing exercises, different practices that you can use right away, yoga practices as well, so that you can really get the feeling for this so that it's something that you begin to really put to life in your life because it's all good to read a book and I love you for reading the book and that's incredible. But really the most important thing and the most impactful thing is for you to take it off the page and into your life, into your body, because that's when you're going to start to feel and see and notice the changes for yourself because it's a practice, right? And and a lot of people, you know, they may want to skip over it because they think, oh, I'm no good at yoga. I'm not flexible. But yoga ultimately at its deepest core is a practice of you becoming more authentically and vibrantly yourself. And the tools that you see, you know, the stretches, the breathing, the hand positions, all that, those are just tools for you to get back to you, for you to come back into yourself and into the present moment. Because otherwise... Like we've been talking about, everything's busy, busy, go, 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 go. And really what I want you to remember is that you are the common denominator in all areas of your life. And in order for you to bring your big vision to life, to accomplish your soul's purpose or mission or what have you, it depends on you, right? And it depends on you being healthy and focused and happy and even wanting to do it, you know, and having the energy to do it. And that's what this this tool set is, is that it provides you all of that all in one practice, because, you know, I know you don't have all day to do this stuff. So you might as well do something that's giving you a lot all in one go on every level of your being. So that's really what I think is so, so incredibly valuable that you'll take away from the book. You listen on Refocus Radio, talking to our guest, Megan Nolan, and get her book on Amazon. It's the warrior's journey, ancient wisdom for the modern entrepreneur. And I want to say something to your point earlier about the whole like I'm not this or I'm not that like like the whole I'm not flexible to yoga you know stuff like that sometimes not all the time but sometimes what we say we're not is a sign of what we should so for example if I say okay I'm not flexible to yoga maybe it's I should give it a shot so I can become flexible and <laughs> maybe that's the biggest problem I'm living what I say I'm not versus living what I could do. You know, for example, if someone says, well, I can never fill in the blank, you know, be an entrepreneur. I can never get a promotion. I can never, like whatever you're feeding yourself, that you're saying you can't. Maybe you should flip the script and say, what can I do that can enable me to do that? You know, what can I do that can enable me to start yoga or start, you know, a new path in career or whatever. Because that's part of waking up the warrior, right? 100%. That, that is it right there, is making the decision to focus on where you want to go, right? And, and the analogy of eyes on the road ahead, because that's where you're going, right? We've all had that experience or maybe, you know, Can I call you off real quick? I'm sorry. Can I cut you off real quick? Yeah. Because I'm going to get you back in. But it wouldn't be hilarious if we all try to get to work looking at the rearview mirror. <laughs> 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 I mean, car accidents would really be. 
Exactly. That's that's exactly what I was going to say, you know, because I remember when I came up with that that mantra and, and that affirmation of eyes on the road ahead was when I was driving and somebody was behind me and they were tailgating me and I was getting so flustered and upset and I was looking in the rearview mirror, you know, and then I realized like, hello, that's not where you're going. You need to look forward because you're still driving. There's still cars out in front of you. You're trying to get home so you can, you know, be safe and what have you. And so if we spend a lot of our time looking in the rearview mirror and focus on the things that we can can't do or that have been a problem for us, it's really going to perpetrate that same cycle. And I know it's challenging to break that habit because we all have that habit of wanting to look back, but that's the habit of humans really is we we tend to, you know, we get a little flustered by something and we sit there and we just go over it. And then we tell our friends how mad we are about it. And we write a blog post about it, you know, and it kind of just perpetrates that whole cycle. Whereas if we are focusing, and this is one of the tools inside the book is, is really training your mind to focus on where you want to go, because that will Will help you to get there. And so it is, it's eyes on the road ahead. And that's so important. And you spoke to something really important there too, is because whenever we use the words, I am, it's a command to your subconscious mind. You are telling it that's what you are. And whether you are exhausted or you are sad, or you are flexible and strong and healthy and vibrantly alive, when you repeat that to yourself over and over and over, you're commanding that belief into your subconscious mind. And so it's very important to become aware of that, right? Because when when we when we catch ourselves in that, you know, and, and we say it, and just pay attention to it now, because we say it all the time, like, oh, I'm stuck. Oh, I'm pissed off. And oh, hi, hi, stuck. Nice to meet you. Is that really who you are? No. So we can be really intentional with the way that we not only, you know, use your word, but also begin to use your focus because your attention, if you keep it on your intention, your your direction that you're headed, your goals, all of that, that really does help you to not only stay in flow, right, but also to move you forward, but also really trains your ability to keep coming back to to the goals, to the vision, to the feeling, because otherwise we get thrown off course so fast. It's kind of like your parents when you're little and they tell you to do something, but you don't want to do it, but they're telling you for a reason because you probably won't understand until you get older and you're like, oh, shoot, I guess I should listen. It's kind of like that, you know, or another metaphor. If you go to a restaurant, can you imagine the wait, waitress or waiter just tell you what you're going to order versus you get to choose? Mm-hmm. It's like you in your life. You get to choose to say, I am this or I'm not that. But a lot of times we can be so stuck in our ways that we we only see what we see in the past. But we never see what we could see now. I heard someone mm-hmm. say, whatever you do now is already the future become reality. And how many times do we just let life continue to go by and we just focus whatever happened in the past? Before you know it, you're going to be old and you're going to be like, man, I didn't do nothing that I wanted to do. Because if you spend your whole life sleeping, then that warrior doesn't ever get a chance to shine. He like a he like a bear. He hibernating, man, too long. <laughs> he should have been up a long time ago. And I feel like that's the saddest thing. We have to get up and be like, yo, even if you have to force it, you, you ever fall asleep, you wake up, don't know where you're at. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what I feel like life is. You sleep too long. You wake up and you're like, dang, where am I? So you have to unpack all those packages. And you have to start over when you could have started a long time ago, if that made sense. It makes total sense. It makes total sense. And that's the thing is, you know, we live in this conditional reality sometimes of, oh, once I have all these things, then I'll start doing that. Or once I'm, you know, I hear it all the time. Well, once I'm more flexible, I'll start coming to yoga. (laughs) Right. It's the opposite, right? Yeah, it's the opposite. Totally. And it's a different mentality, right? It's because oftentimes we think, oh, I have to wait till I have this. So then I can do that and then I'll be happy. And it's it's really, it's backwards. And so it really is. It's, I love what you said there. It's like, are we going to sleep through our lives or are we going to live each day awake? And that's really, that's, 
that's up to you, right? That's your call. And I think that's always so important for us to remember, regardless of, you know, where you find yourself in life or what work or, you know, business or relationships that you're in. It really, it's always coming back to, you get to choose, you get to choose how you feel. You get to choose what you're thinking about. You get to choose how you're going to show up for yourself, whether you're going to make your health and your happiness a priority, or you're just going to wait till one day. Or, you know, right now people are like, oh, it's the summertime. I'll start in September. You know, we get to yeah, September. There's always extra time, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's the thing is that it really is just that, that one foot in front of the other, one little step, one choice, you know, and, and, and that really is where that's the journey, right? The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. And so that's really, I think, important for us to remember. You ever seen those like political cartoons growing up in the newspaper? And it'd be like some kind of message. And you have to like be the smart one that figures out, you know, what the cartoonist was trying to say. Well, I feel like that's that's us. You know, we had to figure out what we want to do, but we just had to do it. Because I like what you said about the whole, like, delaying the time. Oh, I got enough time. Well, we keep saying it to ourselves until there's no more time. <laughs> and then you're forced to do something. And you mm -hmm. won't, most likely won't be happy with the results. Because if you wait too long, that window of opportunity... Before it was massive, you can just like slide right through. You can jump. Now you gotta squeeze your way because <laughs> it's already almost close. Mm. You know, and I feel like we don't realize that until we have to realize it. You know, we want to hit the snooze button. I mean, I'm gonna sleep for five more minutes. <laughs> I swear, just five, just five more, and then before you know it, you're super behind. Now you're forced to rush. Now you're forced to have these racing thoughts. And now you're forced to look in the rear of your mirror, you know? Because you had all that time to be looking in front of you that you lost that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. You know, and, and we, we tend to want to put it off. Someday, one day usually turns into later and then never. And so it really, it is, it's, it's, deciding what is a priority for you and really beginning to take action on that. And, and then, you know, when we start to think about that, then we can easily get tripped up by the, the overwhelm and the confusion. And, and that's where having coaches, having guides and an incredible podcast like this one to really keep you on track, to keep you on the path, to keep you moving forward. Because as we mentioned, that negative committee in our head is always going to try to keep us exactly where we are. And that's part of the reason is because so many people are so associated with that ongoing chatter in their head that they don't realize that there is that inner wisdom, that inner guidance, that warrior within that is calling them to awaken, that is really encouraging them. That's the quiet voice that we hear in our heart of, of your intuition or your guidance or your soul, whatever word, you know makes the most sense that you're familiar with. But that's really what it's speaking to is that when we can do these things that help you to come to a place of calm and clarity and centeredness, then we we have that deep knowing and that deep connection. And so whether that is for you, you know, connected to God or the universe or nature or whatever, it's that we can, we, we all have this capability for so much more than we give ourselves credit for because we're so easily focused on the the faults and the flaws and the negatives and the failures and all of that, that we can keep focusing on that, right? And what we focus on grows and we keep focusing on the way that we screwed up and it didn't work and da-da-da-da-da and it's never going to work for me and da-da-da-da-da. And then we just stay in that cycle, perpetuated struggle, right? And like you said, we keep putting it off until we can't put it off anymore. And that's when we we see people in that place of like, damn, yeah, maybe I had this great financial success, but I, I, you know, had three divorces and my kids don't talk to me and all that stuff. And it's like, okay, well, what's the priority here? And I think it's part of the work that I'm doing is to really create this movement of people around the world, whether you're an entrepreneur or not, because even if you're not an entrepreneur, the tools that you'll learn in the book are very applicable to you because they applic they're applicable to each of us as a being of possibility. The movement that I'm creating is helping people to care so much about they, how they feel because when they feel good, they feel like they're on fire. They can do anything. They feel unstoppable. So making that a priority so that you do something 
to take care of you, whether that's, you know, five, 10, 20 minutes, whatever, to take care of yourself and your health so that you can continue forward on your soul's mission. That's the movement that I'm creating because I believe that in order to be truly successful, you need to be holistically successful. Meaning that yes, of course, financial, that's that's a component of it because let's be real, we all need money and I'm sure all of us would like a little more, you know, but it, that's not the only piece of that pie. It's really important that you enjoy it right? A, you got to get there to your point throughout our conversation is it's a journey, not a destination. So we got to get to the finish line of the goals, but are you going to be able to enjoy it? Are you going to like blow out your shoulder or be so stressful that you have, you know, something, God forbid, like some sort of health issue on the mean in the meantime, or are you going to be able to slow down and do these little tools that you'll learn in the book and with the practices so that you're taking care of yourself so that you enjoy each day. So you're a nicer person to be around. You have a better relationship with your partner or your friends or your neighbor or whatever. It's because you're not cranky and pissed off and exhausted all the time, right? It's like we get to choose. And so that really is holistic success to me. And I think that that's, that's really the, the way that we're all going because we all realize, okay, you know what, there's more to life than money. And there's, and really it does come back to being happy and being able to enjoy each day and be part of the, your community and your family and feel like you're doing something, not just, you know, punching the clock. And maybe, you know, maybe you have a job that that's part of it and that's fine, but how can you show up as fully as possible? How can you make each day as, as expansive and joyful and easeful as possible, even if it feels really hard sometimes. It's really all about our perspective. Once again, this is on Refocus Radio talking to Megan Nolan in her book, The Warrior's Journey, Ancient Wisdom for the Modern Entrepreneur. And just like the book said, it's a journey. I mean, if you if you spent your whole life only worry about getting first place, then you miss the whole basics of trying to cross the finish line. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, ain't, ain't that what everybody want? Everybody want first place. Well, maybe not everyone. Maybe some people just want to finish, you know? Maybe some people just want to run the race as best they can. So when they cross the finish line, they're like, all right, I can honestly say I did, you know, what I wanted to do desire to do. I may not have got everything on the list, but I took my time to endure, you know, everything so I can cross the line. And I think that's the warrior. The warrior is like, he's reminding you what you could be. And he's not only showing you what you are. Because mm. if we only see who we are, we may not cross that line. We may get stuck and not even finish. Or we just keep pushing and then we cross it when we cross it. So yeah. What do you think about that? I love that. I think that's that's beautiful and it's so, so on point because there it is that it's a growth process. It's an evolution process, you know, and each day we wake up and you're not the same person you are yesterday. Like fundamentally. Yes. You know, the, the energy within you is there and you're still connected to the universe and all of that, like fundamentally, but we're all changing. Like things are constantly shedding and letting go, like even just your skin, you know, your skin is replenishing itself, your organs replenish themselves. So we're constantly evolving. And I think that's so important. And that's the, that's really the work of this is, is it's a balance between loving and accepting ourselves for who and what we are today but challenging ourselves to continue to evolve. But at the same time, it's, it's a dance because, you know, we, we see this everywhere and there's so much verbiage around like, get to your next level. You got to up level, you know, you got to make these quantum leaps, all of that. And that speaks to, you're not good enough the way you are right now, which is totally false. Because when we learn how to accept ourselves for who and what we are and how we are, then that really does, it's the foundation for everything. Because it's learning to witness yourself as well as learning to continue to move forward and challenge yourself. So it's it's definitely a dance and it's not easy, especially for people you know, that are really driven, really focused, that go after it, that, you know, they, they, they're doing all the things 
we always have that voice in our head of <clears throat> more, do it more, do it faster, get it done. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And it's this sort of carrot that's dangling out in front of us of like, once you get that, you'll be happy. But as we've been speaking to, it's it's really, okay, how can you find appreciation for who you are right now, for love yourself for who you are right now and where you're at on your journey, but also be curious and be open-minded and open-hearted and come back to what can I do? What can I, how can I make the most of all of this? Like, it really is such an interesting little game that we get to play when we take it from that perspective. It's like someone I had on the show, uh, we're talking about doing the same thing over and over again. And his uh, point, it was about music. Imagine just playing the same song over and over, like no offense, like maybe the song is that great but that's fine. But what about all the other amazing songs that you missed out on? Mm. Cause you chose only to play that one certain song that, that you like, which is nothing wrong with what you like, but maybe you should like other things as well. Cause how many other songs are you missing out on? It's like if someone had a favorite food, not trying to make you hungry, but someone had a favorite food. If that's all they ate, and they never explore any other dish. Mm. Like imagine your favorite food is peanut butter and jelly. How boring would that be? You missed out on all that good stuff. I won't even mm. say because I'm going to get hungry and my stomach's going to growl. But <laughs> you're going to miss out <laughs> on all that good stuff. And I feel like that's life. If all you did mm -hmm. was the same thing you ever known, what you ever did, you're going to miss out on a lot. And until we can be you know, in that state of mind, we have self aware and say, okay, let's just be real with myself. My warrior been asleep for a few years. <laughs> it's time for him to wake up and enjoy life. You get to choose. No one chooses for you. No one says, hey, Megan, uh, you need to enjoy life. And you just respond, yeah, I need to enjoy life like a robot. No, mm -hmm. you, you have to do it. Only Megan knows what you want to do. No one can predict your future and what you want. Only Megan can do that. Very true. It's so true. You know, only each of us, we, we're the ones that can decide for yourself, you know, what the, what the next step is going to be, what you're going to make of this life that you have, what you're going to do with all of it, with each day, you know, what podcasts you're going to listen to, what books you're going to read. That's on you. Right. And, and, you know, it's, it's really important to remember that that's, that's your power is that you get to choose. And the thing is, is that, you know, sometimes we all have these inner struggles of, of doubting ourselves or the inner critic or not feeling like I'm good enough yet, or, you know, I'm not worthy of that. I don't know if I'm capable of that, all of that stuff. And the thing is, is that what, what we're looking for in that state is that we're, we're looking for, we're all looking for affirmation. We're all looking for acceptance and for love and for a little bit of validation. And the crazy thing about it is, is that really, you know, although we look for that externally, it really, and we probably hear this a lot because it's true and it's, you know, it's a reality is that we, we may be looking for it externally from other people, but a lot of the times it's when we're not giving it to ourselves that we are even more actively pursuing that external validation. And it's, it's challenging because it's, we all can have these, you know, lenses that we view ourselves through. And so what we're talking about here and what each day is really is, is the opportunity for us to kind of like polish the lens a little bit or put on a different pair of glasses. And so that you begin to see something a little bit differently. So it's kind of like, you know, if you've ever gone skiing or snowboarding and, or when you go outside and you, or you've been to a 3d movie and you put on those glasses and it changes how you see everything, you know, and either with your skiing, like if it's an orange lens or if you're watching 3d movie, it makes everything pop with the movie. But if you take them off, everything kind of looks fuzzy. And so it's the lens that we're looking at things through. And so what we're doing here and what you'll learn in the book is, is learning to see yourself in a different way and learning to find this evidence so that you can begin to have these more empowering beliefs, more, more empowering tools that you can use through your day as you navigate these ups and downs of the journey of life. Because that's really what it is, is that we're we're trying to figure this out for ourselves, and it's a process and, and it's not easy sometimes. And so when you give yourself the moment of, of what you'll learn in the book and the questions and the different practices is you're giving yourself an experience of it. 
because until we we believe it in our being then we're not going to see it externally you know we we can't wait to see it to believe it we begin to make these decisions for ourselves because nobody's going to come along and say you know like you said oh megan you got to make the most of this day you got to make this day happy nobody's going to come along and be like oh all right today you're good enough you know and, and you would never look at a baby and be like oh you're no good no, you know, better go prove yourself. No, it's it's so backwards the way we are. It's so backwards. And so it really is. It's just slowing down enough to begin to see yourself in a different way. And like you said, it's it's not just seeing for what you are, but it's seeing for what you you are becoming and what what is possible for you, because it's so easy for us to to forget that in the midst of a busy life. Well, if you're ready to wake up your warrior, you need to go get the book uh, by Megan. Nolan, The Warrior's Journey it is on Amazon. You can get it right now. So you don't have to wait, you know, 10 years from now. You can get it like right now. So I'm going to stop mm-hmm. talking so you can hurry up and get this book. So Amazon, The Warrior's Journey, Ancient Wisdom for the Modern Entrepreneur. I want to say thanks again, Megan, Nolan, for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. So you can definitely grab it on Amazon, but if you go to the warrior's journey book.com, you can actually get some extra bonuses, some guided, guided meditations and a great community. When you go to the warrior's journey book.com, you can grab the book through there, but you'll also get some extra bonuses that go along with the book to go a little bit deeper on your journey. So I'd love to connect over there too. And thank you for having me. 